Today, we'll be taking a look at the Nokia E75. And I'll be using my Huawei P20 Lite as a referee, which is too big to fit on the screen, but I'll be using this to look at the specs. So while my P20 Lite is booting up, I'll talk about this phone a little bit. The Nokia E75, which I have in its original case, um, came out in an era where it was basically either you either had a semi smartphone or if you were really rich you had either had the original iPhone or a real smartphone or you were just still sitting with your cheap ass flip phone so yeah it was quite a different time when this phone came out now that, that I have the specs ready we can take a better look at this phone so it was made in 2009 uh, the iPhone was around, you didn't have the iPhone 3G, yeah, you also had an iPhone 3G, but 3GS wasn't out yet, between 2009, April. Um, so yeah, you either still had a more advanced Nokia, I guess, um, or you either <coughs> had a smartphone. <coughs> HTC wasn't really around at this moment, um, I do want you to know, there are probably people out there thinking, well, HTC was getting popular in this time, no. 2009 was not the time yet, it was I think a couple of years too early for that when HTC came around. Um, so, it, here it is in its original Nokia E-series case. I, I mean, it says Nokia E-series on it. The case itself is in kind of a rough shape, as you can see. Um, there are multiple nicks and scratches, especially on the back, but that doesn't really matter since the phone is in really, really good condition. I'd say almost mint. So, taking a look at the device. Here it is. Um, yeah, it looks quite stylish, to be really honest. For a Nokia like this, um, it looks quite posh, in my opinion. Um, it has a su smooth silver rim on the sides. So, yeah, let's take a look. So, on this side, we have the volume buttons. Um, an unknown button, which we'll probably uh, take a look at what it is in software later, and a dedicated camera key. The All of these buttons light up when the phone is in camera mode, so maybe this has to do with camera mode, not sure, but these are probably zoom buttons, also not sure. Um, on the button, you just have your lonely little Nokia charging port, and I do want you to know that, um, yes, uh, if you see one of these holes in a, in a Nokia phone, it is the charging port. Um, you, uh, It's quite um, variable. Um, I've had other phones that have like USB flaps and lanyard slots and then they have this little, yeah, just little hole right there. And uh, is it a Nokia charger or not? Well, it's if it's a Nokia phone, it's, it's for sure a Nokia charger. For example, this much newer but also much worse Nokia C102 um, has this issue where, uh, just look at it. It's just a micro USB port with, with a little hole right there and that is the Nokia charging port right there. So that can be a little bit confusing, so yeah. Um, on the other side, we have the um, USB flap, which actually looks like a button. I kind of like that. It's, it's micro USB, no mini USB like on the Nokia uh, E9, N95 and some other N series. Here you got the micro SD card. Oh, shit. <laughs> Here you got the SD card slot. No idea what it goes up to. I think it actually goes up to 32 gigabyte. Um... Let's take a look at the storage. Um, it came with a four gigabyte included card, but I don't, I didn't get this with the phone. Um, you just have your earpiece and your pretty good, okay feeling keyboard. Um, it's a little bit cramped, but it does feel alright. Um, it's pretty usable. Um, you got your home button here. You got some uh, more advanced buttons here. For example, the home button and the agenda button, the messaging button, and the button for. Um, well, basically the delete key for when you've typed something wrong. Flipping it open, this phone does is a QWERTY phone, as you can see right here. You got your QWERTY keyboard, which feels alright. Tactile feedback could be a little bit better, but it does feel alright. It's more than acceptable in my opinion, and it's not bad. Um, I do find the spacing a little weird. Um, the space bar can be a little bit small, but that you could, could get used to that. Um, it doesn't have any... Um, what they call, it, it doesn't have any arrow keys like some really expensive really re and I'm talking really really expensive Nokia phones have um, When you flip them out like a phone that I will take a look at in a Christmas video that I will make in a few days It has 
arrow keys, which this does not. So you have to navigate like this if you're browsing the internet like this. So that kind of sucks. It does not have a QWERTY key, a uh, arrow keys. So I don't know what the CHR key for is, and I don't know what this little arrow key right here is as well. It's not an arrow key, but I don't really know what it is. Weird thing is that it has this little... Um, I don't know what it's called button, but it doesn't have that in the opposite direction, and you know what I mean. But it does have your usual uh, asterisk and stuff like that. So yeah, decent QWERTY keyboards, tactile feedback is alright, but um, it has no arrow keys, and to be really honest, tactile feedback is just mild. The keys do feel a little bit cheap, but they don't feel bad, to be really honest. At the top you have your headphone jack. Um, and to be really honest, the FM transmitter on this is really good. It puts out a really good F FM signal. Finally, at the back, you got your stainless steel, really cool engraved back offer right here. This came in a variety of colors. Let me just take a look at the specs. So I'm not even sure what color this is. Um, it's this. It's just a silver color. It's got silver black. You also had a red and copper and a yellow color. So, taking the back of her off, <clears throat> as you can see, it just says Nokia E series on there with a little. I don't know if you can see that in 720p, but um, it has this little. I don't know what you call it. I think the, it has a texture on it. Um, there you go, which protects against scratches, which is pretty cool. It has a BL4U battery. Uh, this is the only phone in my entire collection that has a BL4U. Um, it's a 1000 mAh battery and it's a lithium ion. The even more expensive Nokia phones use the lithium polymer battery, don't know why. Up here you have your SIM card slot, as you can see, put the Telford SIM card in there. And your expo what, what is now an exposed SD card slot, putting the battery back in. And the back cover actually says that it's made out of stainless steel. And some numbers right there, so that's pretty cool. Otherwise, it's pretty standard. It cool things is that it not only. Wait a minute, did the flash? Oh no, it's normal. Uh, here you got your three point two megapixel autofocus camera. It has your camera, a flash, and a little mirror, which is cool. So hey, as you can see, it works. Um, and also cool that it has a flash, but I don't know what happened to the flash right there. Tell me in the comments if that is normal. So yeah, the build quality wise, it feels really solid. The stainless steel bag really helps and it does weigh something, definitely. The screen looks to be in really good shape. Um, it is plastic, but it's pretty decent plastic, I have to say. It's not like the thinnest stuff in the world. Turning the phone on, you got this really, really cool effect. Look at that. It also does this while charging. Um, in real life, it's a little bit more noticeable, noticeable, and after a little while, it will turn on. Uh, sadly, I could not get the startup sound to work on this. I don't know why. I don't know why the previous owner turned it off, but it, I think it has been reset or something. I don't know. Uh, flipping it out, it does have keyboard lighting. Let me just turn up the little light here. I don't know if they will turn on, but they do light up. They're not the brightest, but they will light up. Let me just turn off the other light. Oh yeah, there we go. It does light up. It's pretty cool, but it's not too noticeable. And when you flip it out, the keyboard lighting goes on as well. So let's turn on the lights again. So yeah, that's the physical overview of the device. Software wise, let's take a look at the specs again with my P20 Lite. It runs Symbian, as, uh, it runs Symbian with X, uh, S60 on top of it. Um, don't know what RHEL 3.1 means, 3.2, whatever. Um, the CPU is a 369 megahertz ARM11 CPU. Probably a TI processor, probably Texas Instruments, but I'm not completely sure as to what. Um, RAM wise, I'm not completely sure, but it does have an internal storage of 85 megabytes, which is decent. Um, it has a 3 megapixel camera, as I said, but it can film in 480p, which is also pretty decent. And that's on par with the Nokia N73, I think. And 
definitely the N95, but that thing has size optics and a 5 megapixel shooter, so yeah. It's a 240p display running at uh, three, uh, 2.3, uh, 2.4 inch display running at 2. Point <laughs> Jesus, 240p. Um, it looks alright. It's pretty clear. Uh, it's not too bright, but I. It's probably not set to the uh, highest brightness. Um, and it looks pretty clear in my opinion. And colors are pretty crisp, but they can be a little bit dull in my opinion. It's a TFT screen with 60 million colors. So, uh, one of the coolest things in my opinion is that this thing does have, indeed have, Wi-Fi. Which I'm not going to demonstrate here. I already demonstrated uh, sli slightly in the previous video. Well, not a, a previous video of this phone. So, yeah. Um, it does have the OV store. No idea what that is. I've never gotten it to work. Uh, it looks pretty standard. I think they could have done a little bit better on the skin, but it does have a accelerometer. So if you rotate it like this, it will rotate. But I've turned off that feature to save battery life. Not that the battery life is bad. The battery life is pretty decent, but it could be a little bit better. Uh, I don't know what other people think about the battery. Um, it's a bill for you. I've never had a bill for you. I've had I have had Nokia batteries that are different than bill five C and bill four C, but they've lasted pretty good. Um, you also have a front facing camera, but it can only be used for video calling, so technically it just sucks. You can't use it for photos. So, what I'm gonna do now uh, is I'm actually gonna take a picture and I'm gonna demonstrate these little lights. As you can see, they do light up, as, except the middle button, which I'll use right now. I have no idea what that is, and we'll check it out right now. So, it's actually quite a standard Nokia phone. Is that to turn off the backlights? Not even sure. Oh, oh! It's some uh, it's some stupid uh, screen. What's it called? It's some kind of a Siri, but then for Nokia's, it existed. So you can actually talk into the phone, and it will search for contacts. It's a really annoying feature, and it's really creepy in my opinion. But it worked back in the day. Let's just say. Okay, so take a look at the camera interface. It's pretty standard. Uh, this button does not work. It's defective, so I'll have to use it like this. Um, you've got video mode. Scenes, flash, which I'll turn off right now. Um, focus. Uh, I don't know what that is. And gallery. Uh, I can't press the options key since that key is broken, unfortunately. But this is a pretty darn used phone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture of this LED light right here. It has 21 LEDs in it. And it's shining... To preserve the video, and why is it, why is my tripod being an idiot again? I want my video to be horizontal, not screwed up. Taking a look at the picture with an adjusted tripod, it looks quite good. Uh, it's a little darker in real life, but it looks pretty okay, to be honest. Um, white balance is good. It's really, really good white balance, to be really honest. It's sorry for the more effects, but it looks really good in my opinion for three point two megapixel camera. It's pretty darn good, I have to say. Uh, let's go back to that picture. Uh, it has indeed been reset, I think. Oh man, this, this phone can be so slow. I just don't know why. It's so slow sometimes. So yeah, let's take a look at that picture. If it wants to listen to me. Yes, I know. Who cares about the stupid SIM card? Um, I should really take out that SIM card. I just took it out so that I can change the profiles, which is really annoying. You have to put in a SIM card to change the profiles. But I'm not going to see that as a con, since most people would already use a SIM card in this. Uh, in real life, it looks better. And white balance is excellent right here. You can almost see the invincible LEDs. But if you could, then it would be underexposing it. So it looks pretty perfect. It looks pretty pixel perfect, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, let's take a different picture of my phone. So I've taken two photos of basically my phone collection. This one was taken without the LED flash. As you can see, it looks pretty decent, at least on this 240p LCD. Um, oh, well, my phone just focused there and it completely missed it. So, it looks alright, it looks a bit, little bit better in real life. To be really honest, with such poor lighting conditions, I've had professional cameras that have more exposure issues. So, exposure-wise, this camera is really good. I mean, there's some blur, even without zooming in, I can see some blur down here. Uh, which is not visible on camera, because I'm filming in 720p due to storage issues. Oh, 
And this is the video, this is with, uh, with the flash on, plus the items that I'm taking pictures of are pretty darn far away. So that this is pretty impressive, to be really honest. It's not a scene on flash, so it's pretty decent. Um, it looks alright. Um, the blur has been gone now, and it looks like a decent picture now. Even though this one does look like a decent picture, it could have been better. Um, but the fi the fl the flash does fix that. I've had phones that had horrendous flashes. Don't uh, don't uh, get me wrong. So yeah, that's pretty decent. Um, let's take a look at the games. So yeah, software wise, I'd say it's pretty okay. It's definitely Symbian ish. Well, Symbian ish. It is Symbian. Um, it's definitely a newer version, as you can see from the little battery bar here. Um, it might be a newer version than the N95, um, but there also have been no uh, Samsung phones that ha had this exact look, and that really makes people think that Symbian is from Nokia. Symbian is not from Nokia. Symbian is just an operating system on its own. It's not a Nokia thing. Nokia didn't make it, make it so it's pretty Symbian-ish. Their UI could have been a little bit better in my opinion, but software-wise it's quite okay. Wi-Fi works, works well on this, um, and they have fixed the issue that I've had on a phone that I will only take a look at uh, um, when it's Christmas because it's a really special phone. Um, that thing had issues with the zig signal. This phone does not, but it's pretty inaccurate still, but I guess it's just an improvement. Design-wise, it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty industrial in my opinion. But yeah, other than that, it's quite a normal Nokia. So I'll shut this down. So, getting this into one piece. The display, it's decent. It's pretty average Nokia quality. Not to say that Nokia quality is bad, but it's pretty average for a 240p screen. It's pretty clear. The colors can be a little bit dull, but it's more than acceptable. Especially for, what price did it come for? 130 bucks, but that's probably how much it costs today. Book quality wise, very good. It gets a very good for that. It's good quality. The plastic is uh, is almost indistinguishable from the metal it uses. Stainless steel is excellent, obviously. You can't complain about stainless steel at all. Um, good rimming. They did, they, did get a, they did a really good job at the rims of this phone. And I'm talking about this. I've had a lot of phones like cheap Samsung smartphones that have that little coating rub off and this phone has clearly survived that type of rubbing so yeah the keys are worn out but I can't really gi give it that much bad stuff you know I mean it's not the phone's fault it's probably the user's fault like always um, battery life wise it's cool it's good but it had to get uh, a little bit on uh, legs again because the battery was pretty darn dead it did turn on immediately but the battery life was pretty darn poor when I charged it for the first time and when I charged it a couple of times later, it worked fine. Camera wise, the camera is actually really good. It's better than I expected. The flash works, works good. Um, I did not take a selfie, but I can guarantee you these um, little mirrors work pretty well actually. Even in like direct sunlight and stuff like that, they work pretty decent. I've had them on Sony Ericsson phones and stuff like that, so I, w I don't, don't really have to test that, let's be honest. They just work. So yeah, camera wise, it's good. Speaker wise, um, it's pretty good. It does have 3D tunes, but it's just an average Nokia speaker. I haven't really tested it thoroughly, but it's pretty decent. Just, it's not like that shallow stuff that you get on like cheapo Nokia phones. Um, anyways, cool touches are the light up buttons on this. And the keyboard I like as well. It just gets a good, it's decent. It's nothing to scoff at, but it's also nothing uh, to write Rome about home about it's a decent keyboard um but it's nothing to uh, say that it's perfect um not to say that it's bad it's just a little bit of a medium keyboard you know so yeah other than that the headphone jack works fine i've had multiple phones including some smartphones that didn't work uh, decent with a headphone jack so that's good um so other compatibility is good on this um, it's overall a pretty decent phone. It's just a usual Nokia, but it's a little bit more expensive and does have a little bit more features. So, yeah. Keypad is okay as well. Um, it could feel a little bit cheap and a little bit... Yeah, I don't know, man. I prefer this QWERTY keyboard. The QWERTY keyboard is better. So, yeah. Hope you'll stick around and see y'all later. And this was the Nokia E75.
with its extremely worn out case by the way.